Hi. In this video, we'll be talking about exceptions. Now, you may notice that the voice in this video is different from the others. That's because this is a guest lecture. My name is Calvin, and I'll be taking you through exceptions. So, let's face it. Programs have bugs. Pretty much every program ever written has had at least one bug, and that's perfectly okay. Bugs are a good thing. They point out to us what's wrong, they help us learn from our mistakes, and they allow us to fix what's broken. So, let's take this snippet of code, for example, this method divide. Can you see the bug in this program? So the method expects a string value to be returned, but we're actually returning a double. This is an example of a compile time error. So, introducing compile time errors. Compile time errors are errors in the actual Java code. The code will not compile into an executable program because there are errors in the actual text of the code. So compile time errors are errors in the actual text of the code. The code is not runnable because the compiler can't turn it into a runnable file. Now, what do I mean when I say compiler and runnable file? So the compiler is simply a tool that takes the Java code that you've written and it turns it into an executable file that the computer can actually read. It turns out that when your program is running, the computer is not actually reading the Java file line by line. It's actually a different file that has been produced from your Java file. The compiler, in order to produce this runnable file, it needs your Java file to be written in the proper syntax. So some of the biggest compile time errors are simply syntax errors, missing a semicolon, having too many parentheses, too little parentheses, uh, wrong types being used, for example, trying to store a string inside of an int, passing the wrong type of parameter to a method, or returning the wrong type from a method like we just saw. So these are examples of compile time errors, errors in the code that lead to the file not being a valid Java file. So to fix this, we can simply change the string to a double, and now the method is returning the proper type. However, there's still a bug. Can you see it? What would happen if we called divide five zero? If we tried to divide five by zero? Well, if we make that method call, the program will end up crashing because we're not allowed to divide by zero. You really can't divide any number into zero parts. That doesn't make sense. So Java will crash if you ever try to divide by zero. Now this is an example of a runtime error. Introducing runtime errors. Runtime errors are errors that happen while the program is actually running. Even if the code is written correctly and is able to start running, things can go wrong while the program is running. So runtime errors are errors that happen when the program is running. Even if your code is syntactically correct, the values that end up being computed during the run could lead to a crash. So to compare the two, compile time errors will not even allow the program to begin to run. Compile time errors result in your code not being a valid Java file. Runtime errors, on the other hand, will allow the program to begin to run, and then they will crash at a specific line when the error is encountered. So if a line of code results in a runtime error, an exception is thrown. The exception gives information about what kind of error occurred. Exceptions are actually very helpful in figuring out what is going wrong with your program. There's a lot of different types of exceptions, and they give us information about what's going on. So in this scenario, an arithmetic exception is thrown from within the divide method. An arithmetic exception lets you know that you did something wrong with an, arith with an arithmetic operation. Here, we're dividing by zero. If we check first that, the divisor, that if the divisor is zero, return zero, otherwise we can go ahead and divide. Now our program will keep running. Even if we call divide zero, there's no exception being thrown because we don't try to divide by zero. We've debugged our program. So what are some common exceptions that show up? Well, the first is the arithmetic exception. This means that something went wrong computing an arithmetic statement. This usually is dividing by zero. Then we have the index out of bounds exception. That means something went wrong when you were trying to access an index that was out of bounds. For example, what if we try to get the negative one index of a string? Well, there's no character at negative one, so this would throw an index out of bounds exception. We also have the illegal argument exception. And this means that your program is passing an argument to a method that is inappropriate or doesn't make sense. Now, this is a less common exception. Uh, one example in the standard Java library is, so remember, remember that characters are actually numbers behind the scenes. 65 means A, 66 means B. What about negative one? 
Well, negative one does not correspond to any character. There is no character that you can produce from negative one. It turns out there's a method on the character class called getName that takes an integer and returns a string. So if we call getName of 65, we'll get Latin capital A because 65 corresponds to A. If we call getName on negative one, that's when we would see an illegal argument exception. Even though negative one is the correct type, it's an int, it doesn't really make sense to pass negative one to character.getName because there are no valid characters for negative one. This is when an illegal argument exception is thrown. Other common ones are array index out of bounds exception and null pointer exception. And we'll cover these later. For now, let's see some exceptions in the editor. So here we have a program that divides some integers and prints out the result to the user. I've put this first line as simply printing the message running, and this will indicate whether or not the program began to run. Let's see if this program works. Ooh, looks like we have some errors. Well, we never saw running even printed, so it looks like we have some compile time errors. The program was not even able to start running. So we see that we forgot a semicolon here, yeah. Um, we are missing a paren here, so add a parentheses. And let's try it now. Ooh, you're returning a type int when you should be returning a type string. Well, this is a problem from earlier. The method expects a string to be returned, but we're actually returning an int, so let's change this to int. Now let's see if this runs. Awesome, so now it's running, but when it gets to this line, it's calling divide five zero, and now we're getting that arithmetic exception. We may be dividing by zero. Yes, we are. So to break this down even further, we can see that the program actually gets to this line right here. We can print out, I'm here. And if we try to print out here, did I make it? Let's see if it makes it. So we see I'm here, but we never actually make it to here. This is where the error is coming from. So to fix this, let's just wrap this in, let's just check that divisor is not zero. If divisor is equal to zero, then we should just return zero. Otherwise, we can go ahead and divide. Let's try it now. Awesome. So that's an, that's an arithmetic exception, and that's how we can fix it. Now let's see an example of an index out of bounds exception. Here we are making the string hello and accessing different characters from that string. Let's see what happens when we run this. OK, so it looks like we have an exception. We were able to print the H and the L, but when we got to this line, we see that we got a string index out of bound exception, string index out of range negative 1. So it looks like negative 1 is out of the range for this string. What if we try 10? Looks like 10 is also outside of the range. So really, the acceptable range for the string hello is from 0 to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a five character string, so the indexes zero, so the indices zero through four are valid. Let's try printing out four. Awesome. So each of these lines were able to access a valid character, and the program didn't crash. So this is when we would see an index out of bounds exception.